Hi everyone, I want to introduce you today with a little musical toy. This is a sound amplifier, FOSI Audio Model BT30D Pro. Complete with power supply which is also branded as FOSI Audio. Voltage 32 volts and current of 5 amperes, that is a power of 160 watts. And it is already interesting because the power of the amplifier is declared as 165 plus 165 plus 352 watts. And this is already 680 watts with a power supply for 160 watts. Apparently it takes the missing power from the air. So it's a D-Class 2.1 amplifier and you can connect to it not only broadband acoustics but also a subwoofer. It also has Bluetooth in addition to the RCA input. Control knobs are volume main, bass, treble, subwoofer volume and subwoofer cutoff frequency setting and the power toggle switch. Today we'll measure its output power with a standard power supply and listen a little bit. And maybe someone will realize for himself that in fact modern D-Class is ready to compete with classic AB class amplifiers. Here I forgot to tell you, there are two TPA3255, a very good amplifier chip. I had time to listen to it before shooting. The sound is a bit harsh to my ear, but very and very detailed. I connected the power plug. I flicked the toggle switch and the red LED lights up, indicating that the signal is now going through the RCA inputs. Switching between RCA and Bluetooth is automatic, and I will demonstrate it now. You are prompted to connect to FOSI audio, and after a few seconds, the red color of the indicator changes to blue. At the same time, you can hear the click of the relay. I click disconnect and after a couple seconds the amplifier switches to the RCA input. Let's move on to measurements. The signal frequency is 1000 Hz. I apply power and immediately notice quite strong noise. This is the carrier frequency of D-Class operation, the same micro circuit TPA3255. Its frequency is 600 kHz and the human ear cannot hear it under any conditions. And if it were not for the oscilloscope, we would hardly ever know about its existence. I mean, when listening to music, the amplitude is a little over 1 volt and as if that's a lot. But let's see what happens when you turn up the volume. You can see that there is a carrier frequency superimposed on the main audible signal, but that's the way the D-Class works. Perhaps in this case, the output chokes are not quite right, or there is another reason for that. But I will say that there are D-Class amplifiers in which the amplitude of the carrier frequency signal is several times smaller. But back to the measurements. What do we see? At maximum volume, the RMS value of the output signal is only 11 volts. And this is little, very little. At the same time, the smartphone is at full volume, but there is no distortion of the output signal. It turns out that there is not enough gain, or more likely it is artificially low, so that the power supply power was enough to feed to TP3255 chips. Having played around with the tone block, the maximum we managed to achieve at 1 kHz is 12.8 volts. And if we use a calculator, we will see the figures far from the application in the description of this amplifier. It's only 40 watts per channel. Let's see what is hidden under the black aluminum case. We can see a well-assembled board. The radiator is attached with one screw. Here, apparently, there is one and the second injection molding machine. The capacitors are 2200 microfarads each, 50 volts. The tone block uses any 5532 operational amplifiers. All potentiometers are 50 kilo ohm. The power toggle switch, and it is not installed, 
on the power tracks but most likely on the standby pin. Firstly, it is very far from the power connector and secondly, you can see that on the power supply wide tracks capable of withstanding a large current and on the toggle switch come thin less than a millimeter of tracks. The very relay that switches either RCA or Bluetooth next to it is actually located Bluetooth chip. The chip is called ATS2853 and it's pretty good. Apparently, in fact used components not just for sound transmission but for high quality sound transmission. Well, and most likely yes, it will have cooling issues. Personally, this is what I would do. The case here is not ventilated and all the heat generated by the radiator stays inside creating a greenhouse effect. It would be logical to use a material with good thermal conductivity as found in automotive electronics. Create a contact between the heatsink and the amplifier case. Thus, the amplifier case will start to fulfill the function of a heatsink. But I may be wrong. Maybe the Chinese have thought of everything. Let's listen to a little bit of copyright free music. bottom line, I thought it would be louder, it would be more powerful. But a friend's oscilloscope convinced me otherwise. But then again, what's the best way to find it? No background, no noise. Especially for those who want to buy this amplifier, I will leave the link to the product in the description to this video. Good luck to everyone. Bye.